Ventilation and perfusion must be matched to maximize lung efficiency. Overdistension creates dead space. Progressive overdistension initiates capillary compression and blood flow is redistributed to less ventilated regions, aggravating hypoxemia. Superimposed pressure results in fewer, less air-filled gas spaces along the ventral dorsal axis. Pleural pressure rises along the same axis. Independent lung regions, small airway resistance increases from airway compression secondary to increased interstitial pressure. Compliance decreases as alveolar collapse progresses, resulting in decreased ventilation in dependent lung regions. Failure to recruit this functional lung tissue eliminates their gas exchange potential. APRV is a recruiting mode because it maintains a constant pressure, overcoming the closing forces superimposed on the lung, thus maintaining FRC. In addition, it allows spontaneous breathing, which will decrease dead space ventilation and improve VQ matching. High airway pressures have been shown in experimental animals to be associated with lung damage. Most studies use larger tidal volumes to generate the high airway pressure, thus raising the question as to whether the problem is barotrauma or volutrauma. In effect, it is both. High pressures will overstretch alveolar epithelial cells and lead to cell damage. High end inspiratory lung volumes generate high pressure in alveoli. The magnitude of the intraalveolar pressure for a given end inspiratory lung volume will depend on the compliance of that region of the lung. This figure shows how different compliances are achieved under different pressure volume relationships by demonstrating alveolar pressure at different lung volumes. It is important to note the relationship between pressure and volume. APRV enables support with smaller tidal volumes, hence lower end inspiratory lung volume. This figure shows three different compliance curves reflecting normal, moderate, and severe lung compliance. Ideally, support of the patient should keep lung inflation and cyclic volume and pressure changes above the lower inflection point and below the upper inflection point of the curve. If lung volume falls below the lower inflection point, alveoli collapse and re-expansion generates shear forces. Shear forces will damage the lung. If end inspiratory lung volume exceeds the upper inflection point, lung distension occurs and the intraalveolar pressure rises. Another very important element unique to APRV is the direction of lung volume change. With positive pressure ventilation, the level of FRC is achieved with PEEP and lung volume rises with inspiration. During APRV, the level of functional residual capacity is achieved with CPAP and the lung volume decreases with pressure release. Thus, excessive end inspiratory lung volume is avoided. In APRV, the end inspiratory lung volume will never be greater than the volume associated with CPAP. During the initial stages of ARDS, increased capillary permeability results in lung edema. As exudation from intravascular space accumulates, superimposed pressure on dependent lung regions increases and compresses small airways and alveolar spaces. This compression progresses unless counterbalanced by positive airway pressure. Positive pressure ventilation must exceed the sum of interstitial pressure and superimposed hydrostatic pressure in order to reopen lung units. In the early stages of injury, the lung is capable of redistributing edema. However, following the initial phase of injury, alveolar edema becomes organized and is replaced by fibrinous material. Recruitment maneuvers become less effective as response to pressure increase begin to favor overdistension. Lung recruitment needs to be instituted early in the course of respiratory failure. Recruitment of lung tissue requires sufficient airway pressures to exceed the critical opening pressure of the airways. This critical opening pressure follows Laplace's law. The smaller the alveolar radius, the greater the pressure required to remain open. Although high dynamic airway pressure may be applied to recruit the most dependent lung regions, the end inspiratory pressure front must overdistend upper and middle lung zones in the process. Elevating airway pressures may exacerbate lung injury and impair gas exchange. The issue of time over which pressure is applied is also important. Alveolar time constants are prolonged secondary to regional and usually dependent increases in small airway resistance. It is necessary then to provide pressure over a longer period of time to recruit lung involvement in patients with ARDS. Application of CPAP can maintain functional residual capacity. Since CPAP is a constant pressure over time, gas distribution is more uniform. 
Application of PEEP with positive pressure ventilation attempts to retain recruitment achieved during inspiration. In non-dependent lung regions, PEEP may decrease compliance as healthy lung units are over-distended and increase compliance as recruitment of dependent regions is maintained. By limiting shear injury from repeated alveolar collapse, PEEP may have a protective effect on the lung. Clinical studies report improved outcome when higher levels of PEEP are used. Lung expansion also requires time in addition to critical opening pressure. As pressure is reached and maintained, time allows additional redistribution of delivered gas volume. Traditional positive pressure ventilation with PEEP reaches critical opening pressure for brief periods at end inspiration, leaving minimal time for volume redistribution. Ideal ventilator management should distribute pressure and volume to dependent and non-dependent regions proportionately. CPAP should be applied to recruit as many air spaces as possible, maximizing gas exchange. Continuous rather than intermittent short bursts of high airway pressure minimize out of phase inflation of lung regions with different time constants. Prolonged time at a constant pressure rather than high dynamic pressure swings from large tidal volumes allows redistribution of gases within the lung. Airway pressure release ventilation, APRV, augments carbon dioxide excretion in spontaneously ventilating patients on CPAP. It is a means of changing lung volume between two pressure levels in such a patient. CO2 excretion is altered when lung volume drops from high to low as CO2 containing gas exits the lungs. Inspiratory and expiratory cycles are really the spontaneous breath cycles. Restoration of high pressure expands the lungs with non-CO2 containing gas. Simply, APRV is a means of helping a spontaneously breathing patient maintain CO2 homeostasis. In patients with decreased FRC, the work of breathing may be reduced with the application of CPAP. As FRC is restored, inspiration begins from a more favorable pressure to volume relationship. This facilitates spontaneous ventilation and improves oxygenation. In ARDS patients, surface area available for gas exchange is significantly reduced. Spontaneous breathing may be inadequate to solely accomplish the necessary CO2 removal despite optimal lung volume. Rather than producing a tidal volume by elevating airway pressure above the preset PEEP CPAP level, tidal volumes are generated by lowering the airway pressure below the PEEP CPAP level. In contrast to CPAP, APRV interrupts airway pressure to augment spontaneous ventilation. Overdistension is limited since ventilation does not require additional increases in airway pressure above CPAP. Tidal volumes generated during release time may have additional advantages in ARDS patients. Increased elastic recoil is common to restrictive lung diseases and results in increased expiratory flow.